Oh, we're laughing because I was trying to dance like Michael Guerin, but clearly that wasn't going to work. Um, Dean McKenzie's with us. We haven't really got him here to do form. We we'll dance to put... like Michael Guerin, I hope. <laughs> no, <Yeah>. we <laughs> wanted to get um, some reasonable questions in for you and, and get your thoughts around it. Uh, I want to start with the New Zealand Cup state because since 2012 it's increased incrementally 50,000 every mm. year. Yeah. Um, is that likely to continue this year? Look, that's something we're probably working through at the moment with the annual planning uh, process, uh, which is you know annually about this time, hence the name annual. Um, but yeah, so I think the originally in the strat plan in 212, the 750 mark was was around that level where the Miracle Mile was you know 750, the intermediate final was about 750. So you know we've got a duty as a as a club to look after the country's feature race. So it was it, we believed it was our duty to get it to a point where we are comparable. In, in monetary terms to, to those other feature races and we've, we've managed to incrementally do that so that was a planned initiative over a period of time. It would be fair to say that we're probably at that point now we've, we've had to relook at it. Uh, I think last year we worked some way towards that with increasing the stake for the free-for-all. So, so was that around let's get a million dollars for the week? Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. Um, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to work that out. It's, it's, I'm not, that's why I came well, up with it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the end of the day it's, it's, it, it is about being competitive and would we have got the same field for 700 as we would have for 750? I think there's a fair argument to say we would have. But again, it's a bit better than that. We don't, we don't go to the yearling sales looking to buy a, a non-winner. We go to the yearling sales looking to buy a New Zealand Cup winner. It's our country's feature race. We've got to ensure that it stands uh, alongside the other international class races at that level. So, yes, the free-for-all going to 250 makes it so that a trainer sitting at home, when they're planning their race program with their owners, can look at it and go, look, we can race for a million dollars at Addington, three days apart, you know, uh, yes, we're going to have a gut buster on Cup Day, but we can still go down the road on the Friday and run for a quarter of a million, which is the second highest equal uh, stake in the country. So, look, you know, for that week, a million dollars is a bit of a carrot, so. Where are your and the boards and, and obviously the club's thoughts around invites for the New Zealand Cup? Because obviously Arden Rooney came uh, by default in many ways, but he yeah. came back to do what he said he would do, go to Kaikoura. So, so where are you yeah. sort of around that? Look, we, it's funny, how, when the intermediates have changed, the actual, if you look back, the, the year before the intermediates went into the current time slot, we only got, uh, we got two starters, I think we had, uh, I think we had uh, four nominations, I, I, I could stand to be corrected yep. on that. This year, or 2015, this season, we had ten nominations, so they, it was exponentially larger, and we still got two starters, mm. and one of them obviously won. Yes, you could argue that it was a New Zealand horse coming back home, or whatever. Um, so, look, we, 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 we love the Australian interest where they get adds value. Um, the, the, clearly, the Tuesday slot for, for our country's feature race is a good slot, in my view. It gets into the Australian market where there's no competition on a Tuesday afternoon. It, you know, it, it's unlike the jewels where they really have, you know, if you're going to grow that concept internationally, you really struggle because you're always going to struggle. You're never going to get on Sky One on a Saturday afternoon in Australia. So there's a ceiling that, that you can really take the harness jewels, in my own personal view, internationally, whereas Cup Day itself is our country's biggest race day, thoroughbred or harness, and it's Tuesday afternoon. Great time slot, you can actually make something work. By the way, it's only 30 weeks till this one as well. So oh, that's good. Yeah, get I, planning. I, I, I thought you'd be happy with that. Yeah, into it already, yeah. <laughs> you, you've done something different the last couple of years, invited a celebrity. Is that process likely to continue? Yeah, that's in the marketing plan at the moment, but it'll it'll be hashed around, and I think, um, you know, that's one of those things that we'll work over in the next... That, that's always a late... Late call, they're notorious with schedules and timing and all that type of thing. So, but we're certainly looking to do that. I mean, it's just about branding your event. It's like you know J Lo playing at halftime of the Super Bowl. You know, you know, it's not just about football that day. It's about creating an event that the wider public can get a part of, and you can promote our sport, the sport of harness racing, to that wider community. You've been in the role what three, four, and four and a half years, now, four, yeah. four yeah, years, yeah, yeah. rolling yeah. on, isn't it? It is, mate. Um, we're we're showed. Where's show day at? Where, where, where is it at in your mind? And what can you do, if anything, to, to, to lift it? Because it's always been a challenge. Well, I think show day is one of those, uh, it's an unpolished jewel, uh, is the best way I, I could put it. It's actually the 10th biggest race day in New Zealand for the year, in combined turnover, the number 10 day. And so just so that everyone give, give you a yardstick, and, and this is not doing anything else other than giving it a yardstick, is Harness Jewels is the 28th biggest race day in New Zealand. So the two biggest race days for harness racing in the country are obviously Cup Day, which is the biggest day full stop in the country, in the racing industry, and Show Day, which is number 10. So 
I think we've tried to enhance it. We've put a lot of effort into that. The free for all stake's gone to 250. The Dominion stake's gone to 250. It's it's 100k uh, in excess of any other uh, uh, trotting uh, race in the country. So having that day as a feature of the kids' carts, it, it is a day now that has, I think, with the, the KPC that's been added as the, the country's what we'd like to think premier punting competition that's been, and one of that was one of the key uh, 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 focuses that we put because I think you, you know show day is a day for us the punter the guy that likes a bet the girl that likes a bet someone that wants to come to the track and have a and have a bet the fields are good the form is always solid on show day it is it, it's statistically proven that show day's form is very very good so it's got one of those days where you, you, you know we, we saw that the core customer on show day was that guy was that girl the person that liked to have a bet. So that's what we've focused on. KPC is, is, has certainly added to that. All right, I'm going to talk about acceptance fees uh, now because it is a question that's come in from a couple of our trainers and, and yep. your attitude around that. Now, yep. you've come up with the slogan, you start, we'll pay. Effectively, every horse that starts at Addington Raceway gets 2% of the stake. So yep. not only do they get the losing driving fee, but they, they yep. get a you know a, de a decent they'll, float they'll fee in there. They'll you, get a cheque. If, if you yep. like. Yep. Um, that does come off the stake, though, doesn't it? So your yep. mindset around that? Yeah, look, I think we, we worked, we ended up at that point where as a few start now lower, stake race which is a seven and a half thousand dollar race it will pay for your uh, float fare to the track and it, you know which was a good starting we, point. correct yeah. so of course we'd like to we'd like to pay more I think the key when we've approached our whole stakes and we'll talk about the bonuses shortly uh, schedule that we've got is it's got to be sustainable uh, what we can't do is we can never inc uh, decrease stakes at Addington Raceway again so we have to manage our, our our business in a fiscally prudent manner. So when we when we go about reviewing our stakes and bonuses schedule, that's the first thing that we challenge ourselves is is this able to be sustained into the medium to long term? If the answer to that is yes, well then it goes in the annual plan as part of the overall approach. So nomination fees. Getting back to your original question, it, it, you know certainly in thoroughbred racing, and you and I had a conversation about this off camera. It's, it's a far more uh, common occurrence. You know, it's been the Golden Slip of the, the Melbourne Cup, the Wellington Cup, you name it, a thousand guineas. Yep. They've been in the, for decades, mm. it, 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 a long, long time. I recall them my time at Trentham 20 years ago. Yep. We had early nomination fees for races. It is a relatively new concept in, in harness racing, not overly popular w with some. I understand that. But the, the, key, the key part to uh, strategy for us in doing that is to drive exposure for the race, number one, and number two, to generate revenue off the final field book. Now, if you open a final field book where it's free to enter, it's, this, the book's got no integrity. Any, mm. any punter will tell you that. I don't know what's going on. I don't really know if they're serious about going to that race. I'm not going to spend my money. Mm. But when they know that they're actually paying nomination fees as they work through that process, it brings integrity to the book. It ensures that not only does our sponsor get greater coverage and we get greater coverage in the media, the fact of the matter is, is the customer that's sitting at home will, will more than likely invest more because they have the confidence that the connections of that animal are actually targeting that race. So as you work through the nomination process, it's not a revenue generating exercise. It generates less than 10% of the stake for the derby early nomination fees, for an example. Mm. So we don't do it for that reason. You know, we turn over $21 million a year. Whether we get $10,000 for early nominations for the derby is neither here. It's not going to change. It's yet, not going to change. Right. But what it does do is those other things that we referred to, yeah. All right. Um, events, well, yeah, clashes. Yeah, events, uh, AMI and date clashes. Um, do you know, I mean, you, I think you've got four meetings coming up that we're going to possibly change the dates to them. I mean, I asked Auckland about what they would do if they race against the Blues on Eden Park on Friday night. They're looking at maybe racing a little bit earlier, getting people to the track and then shuttling them to the uh, to the rugby and back home again. You're looking to maximise both of them. What, 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 what are you doing? Well, look, it's a little different, a different challenge because the, the our footprint hosts both events. So it's a common car park area. So you've got a situation where, you know, arterial access in Christchurch is not best post-quake at the best of times. You go on a Friday night where, you know, you've got peak air traffic around Addington Raceway in any case. Uh, Whiteley Ave and, that get, and Lincoln Road get blocked up, as I'm sure Greg knows, trying to get to the track. We've got float drivers, uh, you know, trying to get to the track and access it and whatnot. So having, having both events on the one night is logistically challenging. Is it, is it workable? Of course it is. We've, we've done it two or three times since AMI Stadium 
moved from its Phillipstown base to where it is now. That, that, so operationally, is it challenging? Yes, it is. Can, can we get around it, Michael? Of course we can. It's, it's, it's not putting someone on Mars. So we can, the, the reason we've, we've we, in recent, the recent couple of years is we've moved away from that is, is exactly what you said. We've got the opportunity to fill our venue on two occasions in, in a week. Why would we want to squeeze all, squeeze all that into one night? So we're trying to use Spectators, our, our seven-day-a-week bistro, to, you know, for regular events. We've got the arena next door, of course, so there's not only clashes with, with our uh, product, but we've got you know, the um, arena on the same footprint, utilising the same car park and presenting the same challenges. So. Uh, we, you know, every week we, thankfully, which is a good problem to have, mm. you know, we're filling our venue before a concert starts. And it, and it is significant revenue. So obviously next week, Friday becomes Wednesday, and then yeah. you've got two Saturdays now in May. So yeah. it's worth a lot of money to the club. I just want to move off that a wee bit, Dean, and, and move on to the Met Multiplier and how successful it's been. I think the greatest accolade, if you like, is the fact that Auckland have now changed theirs and followed suit. Surely that's uh, when your peers do that, as we see uh, Bird of Paradise here getting its bonus. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a wonderful initiative, isn't it? Look, it's worked really well. Uh, I think the key driver for anything we try and do is to ensure that we get some payback. In other words, we, you know, the, 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 the basic uh, strategy behind the multiplier is to, is to fill our fields. So. You know, we've had there's a number of occasions that I could point to where we've we've got a race off the ground because there's one or two horses that are chasing the multiplier. So that eight horse uh, race that goes ahead with two in it that probably can't win, uh, you know, th th they've made that race happen. That was great for Bird of Paradise winning the race. Here's an example, Christian Lady. He had already won a race, so yeah. only had to go around, I think it finished seventh on yeah. this occasion, but seven and a half still dropped in, so um, yeah, well, it yeah. actually finished. Yeah, Third. and, and look, go. I think the common um, fallacy with the, oh, there's that word, the, 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 with, with the multiplier is it's just for the lower class horse. You know, Vela Luster uh, only got a, who ran second in the Group 1 race last Friday night, it, it, it got a multiplier a couple of weeks ago. So it's, it's an initiative that, that is actually valuable for, you know, Robert Dunn, one of, one of the leading stables and the trainer, has, has won 10. They've won about 11% of the multipliers that have gone off in the history of the multipliers. So, you know, we've paid out 585, 600,000 in the multipliers, you know, in addition to state money, so the yep. state money that you see in the, in the best bets, so in the history of that, so that's, that's a lot of money that's gone back out, and it's not just for the big stables, and it's not just for the small stables. And at the end of the day, our field sizes increase, which means we can generate more revenue, which means we can pay higher stakes. Breeders' bonus is another thing that's been able to hand out. There's so many things we could talk about. We haven't even got on to the hotel development, which is potentially going to happen, and I'm, I'm, hopefully we can get a chance to do that uh, further down the track. We're about to take a short break here. You're on your box seat. We've still got preview to come.